Hi everyone, my name is Erin Hyatt and I'm going to be commenting on the newbie tag for booktube. Um, and that what this is is basically just a series of questions for people who have started their booktube account on YouTube um, just as they're entering the scene. So uh, first question was why did you start this channel? Um, to be perfectly honest I had a special project um, in one of my graduate school classes and it was just kind of to take what we're learning and make something fun out of it. So do anything that seems fun or interesting or whatever with literature. So I thought that this would be a really neat way to kind of share what I'm learning as I'm going through the program. So question number two, um, what are some fun and unique things that I can bring to YouTube? So I'm a master's student. I'm studying feminist literature at Weber State University. Um, so I thought that what I could bring to booktube is a little bit of an academic bent and, you know, I like to keep things mostly in the realm of um, popular culture and things like that. So I like to be able to kind of bridge the gap between what can seem kind of didactic in academia and make it into something interesting that people can actually take with them and kind of be thinking about in their everyday lives. Number three, what are you most excited about for this new channel? I'm excited to build a community. I think that um, there have been a lot of really cool videos on booktube and it's something I didn't even realize existed until a few months ago. So it's been really interesting for me. I love personal stories and I love feeling like I have access to someone's personal like thoughts in their life. And I think that the booktube scene is a really neat way to do that. So it's a cool way to kind of share what we're all learning. Um, I feel like you don't always get a whole lot of book lovers in general circles. Like I have plenty of friends who love books, but I feel like this has been a really neat way for me to sort of bridge with other people and kind of learn their perspectives on reading and the kinds of things they read and why. Number four, why do you love reading? I love it because it's awesome. I feel like I used to be a nonfiction junkie and so I was always reading because I just wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn something. I wanted to, in my free time, come away with, um, I read a book on the atom bomb or something. And so now I know all that stuff about it. And I sort of ignored fiction for the longest time, not really understanding how much fiction has to teach you as well. So a few years ago, I made an effort to start reading just a couple books a week, just start with maybe the classics and go from there. And so what I've really loved about that is being able to take all of these interesting ideas and see how they're all connected and see how everything has to do with even the nonfiction that I read. So all of these ideas in fiction, it's just so interesting because it's, it's a, an exercise in philosophy almost. So it really enriches your life and, and makes you think about things more when you're a reader. Number five, what book or series got you into reading? Um, that depends, I guess. When I was little, I loved the American Girl books, which are really just a front for selling cute doll clothes. But it was also a really cool way for girls to read accessible books um, at a young age. They're written, they're written pretty well, but they also have pictures and short chapters, things like that, that make it easy for someone in, say, the th second or third grade to pick up and understand. And they also have a lot of really good historical background. And looking at it now, I realize there's a lot of feminist background. Um, so that was a big one for me when I was really little. That was the one that, that gave me permission to say, okay, I can read about girls and be interested about girls' issues, and it's also cool to like history. So I thought those were good. Um, another one when I was little, Anne of Green Gables, obviously. It's amazing. I love her so much. <laughs> but um, she, Ella Montgomery, wrote in a really accessible way again, but it was also, it's also pretty artistic. So the books hold up even now when I reread the entire series like last year when I was 28. So that's one that really got me into, um, first of all, finding my own voice because I'm also have like Canadian roots, like of the, you know, maritime Canadian provinces and I'm a redhead and I have a temper and all that stuff that Anne Shirley has. So. It just gave me the idea that boys aren't everything, and even if you have a boy that you really like, probably all the other stuff you're doing is maybe a little bit more important than locking him down, which she does eventually, but she also focuses on being a writer, earning a BA, all this good stuff that I thought was really helpful for someone that was a little girl to read. Um, Finally, the other book that was like, by the time I'm creeping into my adult years going, okay, well, maybe, let's say adolescent, adolescent years. 
the the book that really spoke to me, and this is going to sound super hipster and cliche, was Catcher in the Rye. But not because I think Holden Caulfield is brooding and wonderful, but because he's a jackass and everyone's a jackass when they're that age. So for me, that was just a really cool, like, truthful telling of, like, this kid who thinks he's super intellectual. But, I mean, if you read between the lines, it was just really an interesting read and an interesting look at sociology and an interesting look at kind of how we're all feeling at that age. So that was the first book as I was coming into, like, adulthood where I was like, okay, I'm going to read now because it's it's just really interesting and they, they explore so many really cool ideas and books can be a very important part of the way that you process life. Question five. Sorry, question six. What questions would I ask for my favorite booktubers? So I've only seen a few so far. I haven't had too much time to poke around and um, really create a network yet since this is my newbie tag post. But I would just ask, do you often bear in mind sort of critical um, theory kind of questions as you're reading? Because I find that when I'm, even when I'm engaging with something that's like maybe a YA novel or something that probably wasn't intended to be poured over quite that much. I, I find that as an academic, I look at it and, and read all these extra things into the text. So that would be my question, I guess, is just um, how often do you find yourself just purely reading for enjoyment? And how often do you find yourself just analyzing everything that you read? Um, number seven, what challenges do you think starting a book, booktube channel would be the hardest to overcome? Um, time. I, you know, as I mentioned, I'm a graduate student. I'm also a full-time graphic designer. Um, I work here in my home office, but um, I tend to schedule myself pretty tight. So um, I think that the biggest um, challenge would be just finding the time to to contribute to the community as much as I ought to and to be able to um, talk about the things that I'm reading. Um, typically, when you're, you know, in graduate school, it's like you're totally sick of the book by the time you're done writing a paper on it. But I can see that being a challenge is just finding the time to read stuff that I really want to read and comment on. And then, you know, just being able to get on and make a video. Um, number eight, this kind of is a retroactive question, but when did you start reading? I mentioned um, I started reading, obviously, little. I, I went to uh, I went to a public school in the United States, so we had a decent reading program early on. Uh, my little brother, not my little brother, big brother, he was just little when he taught me. He taught me how to read when I was in, like, preschool, kindergarten, and... Um, I wrote a little short story in the first grade and got to go to some author convention and meet an author and all that. So it was just like this neat little thing where it was, you know, just a little thing that little first graders can participate in or whatever. But it was it was important to me because it made me feel like a legit person. Like, you know, even though I was like six, I could, <laughs> you know, it made me feel like I could have an authorial voice and be a part of this community. So that's kind of when I started is just the typical like I learned to read when I was when I started school. Um, number nine, where do you read? Um, depends. Uh, sometimes I read here in my office. I do some, you know, when I read like proofreading projects for a publisher, you know, I read here in the office. Um, a lot of times I'll read in bed. Um, sometimes I make my husband put on headphones. He's a film major, so he puts on headphones, enjoys his thing, and I get to read and enjoy my thing. So, living room. Um, you know, sometimes I, I read read in the car. <laughs> um, I do have a long drive to get to my classes, so it's really cool to be able to pick up an audiobook, um, pop it in, and just kind of go with it. And to me, like, I always kind of shied away from that, but I think audiobooks are really great as, like, a supplement to, like, holding a book in your hand because um, it gives you, when you're doing something mindless like driving somewhere, it really, it, it gives you that extra time. Like, I was talking about time being a problem earlier, and it just gives you that you know, you can actually be achieving some reading, even though you might be on the road or something. Um, number 10, what kind of books do I like to read? Hmm, so lots of stuff. Um, I've been engaging with the classics just because I felt like, um, even though I went to a really good school for my undergrad and everything, I just feel like I didn't really get a really solid grounding in the classics. I think I opted out of most of the literature classes because I was in music, so I just used those, and then I majored in linguistics, so not a lot of pouring over Jane Austen in linguistics. So um, I have been reading those lately. I really love dystopias. Ever since I first read, I'm trying to think what the first one I read was, maybe 
Um, well, I like Topia. So the first one I read was Thomas More's Utopia. And then as far as dystopia, dystopias go, I think the first one I read was um, Anthem by Ayn Rand. And those books are really interesting for me because I love the idea of creating this horrible, desolate wasteland and having all of these sort of subtexts that say, well, this is where we could be living if we're not careful. So some of them can be a little um, preachy, obviously, but um, those those kinds of books have led me to things like Octavia Butler's The Parable of the Sower, which is a really amazing one. So um, it's it's just kind of a cool way, because I'm so interested in social justice and feminism, I feel like that's something that they explore a lot. So I feel like in terms of books that I really like to read, I like to read things like that. Um, lately I've been getting into magic realism a little more. Typically I'm a sci-fi nerd and I hate anything that's got elves in it or fairies or whatever. I'm just done. I don't even want to deal with it. But I've found that lately when we do things like um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez doing his magic realism types of things or this book I'm reading now, Above Us Only Sky by Michelle Youngstone, um, it's about like a girl who was born with wings and she just, you know, she they, they get removed at birth but she doesn't realize that back in her family many generations, like, some women have been born with wings, which obviously is some magic realism thing, right? But I've been getting more into that because I'm starting to see the implications that that has for crossing over and making something like fantasy that we don't always see as literary, having access to more of a literary sphere. So that's kind of a little intro to what I like to read. Pretty much anything. Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to comment and I look forward to uh, building a community with you.